Hi, this is Carl. Welcome to another super success video for managed service providers. Today I want to talk about why you have to right size your offering. You can't have an offering that's too big or too small. Your bundle cannot be too big or too small. You got to figure out what's just right. What am I talking about? Well, here's the deal. I was listening to the radio story about how Disney doesn't want to break up their streaming service. They've got the big, big bundles and they want to force different channels, different, you know, restreamers to take the whole thing. And I don't care if you don't want ESPN and the home, this and that network, you get it all. We're not going to break it up. You got to take the whole thing. Some MSPs have made the same mistake. They believe there's only one offering and the offering is the offering and it is everything that we can possibly put together on the face of the earth, take it or leave it. Well, that's great when all of your clients have an unreasonable amount of money and they're growing and everything in the universe is expanding. Great. But sometimes people tighten their belts. Sometimes people look at it and say, there has to be some limit to how much stuff I'm going to buy that I'm never going to use. So let's look at what makes a bundle too big and what makes a bundle too small. Remember, bundles are kind of where we got our industry headed in the right direction about 20 years ago. It started with, you know, back in the days of break fix, and some of you are still doing break fix. In that world, you sell hardware and software, and you sell services, and you sell projects. And if you're, if you really love your clients, <laughs> you sell maintenance services, and you provide regular preventive maintenance. You make sure that everything's patched and fixed and updated. You, you put all this stuff together, and you make sure that they're taken care of. And the client gets an invoice for hardware and an invoice for software and an invoice for services, an invoice for projects, an invoice for maintenance, an invoice for little stuff that came up. And eventually the client says, you're killing me with 12 invoices a month. Give me one invoice. And so a lot of what happened with managed services was literally saying, let's put together the bundle. Let's put together a bundle that says, you know, on average, Maintenance takes this many hours and we know that there's going to be a few other hours over the course of a month. So we're going to put it in a bundle and that bundle is most of what we expect you to buy in a year. And yeah, there will be additional invoices over the course of the 12 months because there's no such thing as all you can eat. Please watch a million diatribes on there's no such thing as all you can eat. Insert those here. So the managed service concept comes down to, you know, we're hoping that this is going to cover 80 or 90 percent of your invoices for the year if we've bundled it properly and we got the right package. Then we say, OK, in many cases, there's three tiers of bundles and that might have to do with the services offered, the variety of things that are included, uh, security levels, all kinds of different things. OK, so you've got different kinds of bundles, maybe some for smaller clients, some for bigger clients whatever. But it basically boils down to three or so bundles that allow you to sell essentially the same thing, standardize as much as possible. And now you've got something you can sell and sell and sell and sell, which is great. So that's where we came from, how we got here. And I would say there's a similar story with regard to cloud services. In cloud services in a month, I talk about, you know, the, the, the big project is all about how do we bundle this and basically do cloud services as a managed service. And it is all about the bundles. It's all about finding something that you can sell again and again and again. When you look at the big picture, part of what you have to say is, OK, I want that to work, but not everybody needs everything. And one of the objections that I've heard a lot from IT consultants that I don't hear from clients is, well, I don't need this, or I don't need that, or I only need three licenses, I don't need five, and my clients know how to count, and blah, 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 <laughs> right? Clients don't say that. If you've got the right bundle, clients say, okay, so 
I'm buying a five pack of licenses. And so I've got five people who can use the office and our cloud and our email and file storage and you know, whatever. If I go to, you know, six or seven employees, I'm going to have to buy another five pack. Okay. I get that. Clients understand that. And they understand that there's some stuff that doesn't get used and it's okay because it's a reasonable number. And this has always been the case. Think back 20 years ago, you would frequently sell a 20 user license for antivirus because you got a good price on it and it was a nice bundle. And the client who had 17 employees never whined about it because it was cheaper than if they bought 17 individual licenses. The bundle makes sense. People get the bundle. They understand the bundle. Now, if you had said you can't do that, you have to buy a hundred license bundle. Well, if you only have 17 employees, now you're saying, well, wait a minute. I'm not going to buy something with a hundred licenses, have 83 unused licenses, and I only need 17 of them. That is an unreasonably large bundle. Okay. So you can't be too big and you can't be too small. Now let's take a second and drill down into the too small. What makes a bundle too small? The first thing that comes to mind is it's not secure enough. If the bundle is not big enough for you to patch and fix and update and monitor security and provide for spam filtering and antivirus, right? It's not got enough stuff in it to actually do the basic security that you need to be in business. Now you don't need all of the stuff. It doesn't have to include every security product that you can possibly think of, but it should include enough so that you can sleep at night knowing that you haven't sold your client something where they're going to get attacked and they're going to suffer the consequences. And it's kind of your fault for underselling them something. I want you to sleep at night. Your client wants you to sleep at night. Another way that you can undersell is that you basically have included too little in order to get the price low enough. You sell something and now there's lots and lots and lots of stuff that's not covered by your contract. And so you're back to having an extra invoice for this and an extra invoice for that. And the client's no better off than they were 20 years ago, right? So you can't sell them too little. A third way that a bundle can be too small is it's just not profitable enough for you to stay in business. And if you don't stay in business, you can't help the client down the road because you're, you're going to be doing something else for a living, right? So it's got to be profitable. It's got to be something where you can run a sustainable business selling that thing. And I'm not a believer in loss leaders. If, you, if, if you're not running Walmart or Target, don't have a loss leader. Don't lose money getting people in the door so you can upsell them and all kinds of stuff. That's just not a, a workable business strategy for anybody, but it's horribly painful for people in small business. So don't go down that road. You are not Sears. You are, oh wait, Sears went out of business. Yeah. Don't be Sears. Those are some of the ways that a bundle can be too small. How can it be too large? Well, kind of flip it around. If you've got security stuff, that's great for a business of a thousand people and you're selling, you're including whatever it costs to have a uh, high end managed uh, switches and firewalls. And, you know, they've got $40,000 worth of networking equipment just to make sure that their seven users are secure. That's probably too much. And I think we know kind of in our, in our heads, there's a right size for the right client and people need to be as secure as their budget allows them to be. Something that is too big will also include so much unused stuff that the client looks around and says, you know, I use 10% of what you're selling me. There has to be a way to slice and dice this down to the stuff that I actually use. The analogy that I heard on the radio with regard to these streaming services, not wanting to unbundle was perfect for this. 
Imagine if you went to the grocery store and you only need whatever, 15 items. And they said, oh, I'm sorry. All the only option you have is you've got to buy a huge cart full of stuff. You need $300 worth of groceries every time you walk in the door. There are no other options. You would find another grocery store, right? That's the way you need to think about your services. If you only have one big bundle and it is this expensive and so big, well, you have fewer and fewer clients who are going to buy that. And remember, just because somebody bought it once doesn't mean they're going to renew or they're going to stick with you. If they feel like they have been oversold, they will be gone as soon as they are allowed to get out of that contract. You also have the case that over time, all of your clients are going to rethink whether or not this is a good decision and worth continuing. Even the people who love you the most, every once in a while, they have to, as a business owner, step back and say, is this a good thing going forward? Should we continue this? Now, in a perfect world, they're going to say, obviously, we love them so much, we're going to continue and they could increase their rates by another $100 and we would still do it because the service and the bundle and the packaging and everything is so perfect, we can't live without them and they make our business better. That's what you want your clients to believe. If, on the other hand, their view is, well, you know, they have been really expensive for a long time and they're not flexible and they make us use all this stuff and they make us buy all this crap and we're spending all this money and I'm not sure we're getting our money's worth. Well, now when they go to rethink their bundles and rethink the vendors that they work with, you might be on the cutting table. So part of being too big is having a bundle that is profitable in the short term but has no long-term prospects whatsoever. And you've seen this with vendors. There are vendors who say, oh no, you gotta be the big package. You can't buy anything else. And if you want anything else, well, you gotta wait until your contract is up. And you know, you literally have decided to not renew a year or maybe more than a year in advance because they have just destroyed the relationship. You do not wanna do this with your clients because you need that ongoing relationship. Ultimately, the right size bundle, the not too big, not too large, just Goldilocks right size bundle is one that a client will invest in, feel like it's good value to them, feel like it's a good relationship and want to continue doing business with you for the next 10, 15 or 20 years. So make sure that you work on the things that are going to be good for your client in the long term. And ultimately, that's how you right size your bundle. Now, having said that, you need to think about having as few bundles as possible and get those sizes just right. And those needs change over time, which is why you need to constantly be tuned into the industry, what's happening, what's changing, what's going on, and make sure that you're always offering just the right bundles. I would love your comments, questions, like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Put your questions down below and I will be very happy to answer them. For Small Biz Thoughts, this is Carl Palchuk wishing you the best of luck in your managed service business.